כולנו ביחד לשם מצוות מזבח אבנים. לשם מצוות מזבח אבנים. שלום. I'm Rabbi Chaim Richman from the Temple Institute in Jerusalem. With me is Yitzhak Ruvain, and we're talking about one of the most exciting projects that the Temple Institute has ever embarked upon, the construction of the altar of the Holy Temple. And this was begun on Tish Ab Av, the ninth of Av, the day that we commemorate the destruction of the first and the second Holy Temples. And of course, this is a huge shift uh, in the history of the Jewish people, because after 2,000 years of mourning on Tish Ab Av, we turned the tide this year and now we are building, building the altar, which is the heart, the center, centerpiece of the Holy Temple. It was a massive piece of construction in its original format. And what we're building today is somewhat smaller, but it's still quite large. It has a base of three and a half meters wide and a height of three and a half meters wide. The ramp at the Kohanim, the priest will walk up to get to the top of the altar is ten and a half meters long. It's a big piece of construction. It's being done here in the land of Israel with elements from the land of Israel. The stones, as we can see here, were taken from the bottom of the Dead Sea where they have never been touched, never been touched by any metal implements. Strictly forbidden because metal is considered by Torah to be an implement of war, uh, inflicts pain, and God forbid... Metal shortens altar. the life of a man, but the altar elongates the life of a man and brings atonement. So there should be no contact with metal to any, for any of these stones. And in, in fact, they were sealed up, each one separately, as they were transported to where the altar is being built in a town about 20 kilometer northeast of Jerusalem. And they were wrapped individually so that they could sort of be guaranteed to, to be pure stones, never touched by metal. So we're actually building it on a minimalistic level now, but when the time arrives for us to be able to transport it to Mount Moriah, the Temple Mount, where it belongs, then we'll be able to expand upon its size as well. And the altar actually has to be located, has to be placed exactly where it was in the Holy Temple. The location of the altar is extremely significant and it's never supposed to be changed. The, the, the actual location idea. is in the place where Adam Arishon, the first man, was created from the, the dust of the earth, correct? Yes, this is the place where Abraham bound Isaac, it's the place where Jacob laid his head and saw the dream of the ladder, but it's the place where Adam brought his offerings and it's actually the very place from where Adam was created. And this is a beautiful idea that our sages tell us that God, as it were, brought the cure into the world before the illness. And the altar is the place that brings about the spiritual realignment, rectification of Adam and all his children, all of humanity. Now, and I had the privilege of being on location this past week in Mitzpah Richo and seeing the beginning of the construction of the altar and it had a very profound effect on me. Part of that effect was the fact that the stones, as we said, are taken from the, the bottom of the Dead Sea, which is really the lowest place physically on earth. And they are being brought to the Temple Mount to be part of the altar, which lifts man up spiritually higher than any other place on earth. What really impressed me was the notion that the stones, the earth, the sand that this altar is made of are the very same earth and stones that man himself, and that means you and me, are created from. And that really brings us back to our basic elements, you know, elements that tie us and connect all of us together, which, as I see now more than ever before, that's why the Holy Temple can be a house of prayer for all nations, because on this level, on this level, we really all are Adam Arishon. We are that original man, and it's the enables us to rise above ourselves, rise above our animal natures. And of course, the karbanot, the animal offerings, which were made on this altar. You know, a lot of people think that the offerings were some form of glorified barbecue. And some people think that's, wow, it's a great way to worship God. Some people think that's a horrible way to worship God, but it really wasn't that at all. And you learn that more than ever when you experience, you know, Torah is an experiential thing. And to actually see the stones of the altar, as far as that is away from seeing the altar completed and the actual service, it still gives us an insight into what it was and what it will be more than, than we've ever seen before. And I feel that the altar, beginning the construction of the altar, brings us light years closer to the actual construction of the Holy Temple. In the Torah portion of Parshat Yitro, when God gave Israel the Torah, 
at the revelation of Mount Sinai it was such a tremendous spiritual experience and it was so abstract I mean God has no form no beginning no end and, and he exhorts the people to know that there was no image there whatsoever and so one might think that religious experience is something that you know how can it be attained it's so ethereal but at the end of that Torah portion, the verse tells us, God says, when you want to serve me, you build me an altar of earth and stone. And that's so beautiful. And that's really the, the whole idea of what Torah is teaching us about this world, that God says, look for me in this world. Don't look for me on some spiritual trip that isn't real. If you want to serve me, you build an altar of earth and stone because I'm in this world, I'm right here. And the whole message of Torah is that we use everything in this world, we elevate it to get closer to God.